all of the doctors were shocked. Things didn't go as God had planned it. It could have been really, really bad. I kid you not, in the span of two hours, I gave birth. The birthing story doesn't end there. Because after I had given birth to Aggie, I was bleeding so much. Hello and welcome to my birth story. Oh, straight to the point. Hi guys, I am one month postpartum and no, I'm not just wearing a poncho for nothing. There is a baby nursing underneath and we're gonna try and make it work this way because Eliam is napping upstairs. This baby won't detach from her mama. So I'm going to do my best to give you my birth story as I'm nursing. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. I gave birth at 40 weeks and 3 days, which is super full term. And if you followed our weekly vlogs, nakita nyo naman yung pagod at frustration sa mukha ko because I was just exhausted with being super pregnant. And Aggie was so heavy. At na-confirm natin yun, dahil paglabas niya, she was an 8-pounder. So, so she's very big. It was a crazy birth experience. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while now, but living life as a mom of two has been crazy. So I haven't gotten around to do that. Here it is now. I have some questions from you guys from the community and we'll try to answer it. Uh, there are major differences, but there are many similarities. So, for example, it's 40 weeks then. Tapos mutikan din ako induce. Kay Eliam na induce ako. Kay Agi mutikan ako induce. And 40 weeks sakto ako nang na kay Eliam. Both births happened on a Friday, but the major difference is that I had an unmedicated birth. Now, a lot of people were asking me if I was planning to have an unmedicated birth, and the answer to that is yes. Even with Eliam, I wanted to have an unmedicated birth, pero I just I couldn't push myself to do it because it was my first baby and first pregnancy and it was in the middle of the pandemic and I had no idea what to expect. I just didn't want to risk it. I was like, I'm gonna try and see first kung ano ba yung feeling ng giving birth with an epidural. Itong kay Agi, I also gave birth vaginally. Normal delivery siya. But wala kong epidural, wala kong anesthesia, no medicine, no nothing. So how did it all happen? So I gave birth April 21. Leading up to my birth, Every week, talaga nagpapamasahe na ako kasi nga gusto ko ng mga na. So, I did the works. I did the massages. I did the essential oils. I did the constantly walking, working out, intimacy. Everything that they said would put me into labor did not work. I will just leave this to the Lord. And if hindi talaga ako mga nganak ngayong week na to, I'll just wait. You know, I'll just wait it out. I decided na lang na I'm gonna put my big girl pants on and I'm gonna be happy and enjoy these last few moments of pregnancy. And then Wednesday night, the parents of Wancho came over, tapos nanood lang kami ng movie, tapos nagpamasahe ako, pero sobrang light massage lang, nagpa-foot massage ako dun sa masahista ko. Tapos natulog na ako, thinking na, you know, nothing's going to happen because wala talaga eh. Sabi ng doctor ko, wala. No signs of giving birth anytime soon. Wednesday yon ng gabi. On Thursday, madaling araw, I woke up at around 4 a.m. and I was having contractions already. Oh, sorry, honey. Now, Thursday ng madaling araw, around 4 a.m., I started having contractions. Nagko-co-sleep kami nila Wancho. I woke up na nafe-feel ko yung contractions. Sabi ko, oh, baka wala lang to. Kasi ilang days na ako, ilang weeks na ako nagkakagano na. Nagka-contractions ako. I would tell Wancho or I would tell my doctor, I would tell my doula. Then biglang nawawala. I I couldn't go back to sleep anymore because it was very painful and para mga 10 minutes apart yung contraction. So, okay, nakikiramdam ako. I got up na and I started to shower. Tapos, tinext ko na yung doctor ko. Sabi ko, Doc, parang yung contractions ko around 7 to 10 minutes apart. It's getting stronger and it's consistent. So, sabi niya, go to the hospital na because it's your second baby. You might give birth ka agad or baka abutan ka pa. Eh, malayo kami sa hospital. Diba? Siyempre, nasa south talaga kami and may hospitals in Makati. Uh, from 10 minutes, biglang every 7 or 6 minutes, nagko-contractions ako, tas palakas siya ng palakas. And I had to wake up once and I, and I woke up once and I said, Love, I think this is it. We have to get to the hospital. I tried to be calm, as calm as possible. And I think 
I was too calm na si Wancho, hindi niya na sense na <laughs> masakit na. Nag number two pa siya ng matagal at nag shower pa siya ng matagal. <laughs> Tapos, ako na yung tumawag sa parents ni Wancho. Tinawagan ko na si Mommy Patty, my mom-in-law, who are amazing by the way, shout out to Mommy Patty and Daddy Greg. They took care of Eliam for the three days that we were in the hospital and they rushed here. Nung mga 5am na yun, andito na sila kaagad. Tapos, si Wancho nagsashower pa rin pagdating nila Mommy Patty. So, sinisigawan ko na siya. Sinisigawan na siya ni Mommy Patty na, Wancho! We have to go! Ginaganan na siya ng mom niya kasi nagbe-belt pa siya. Feeling ko nakapag-wax pa nga si Wancho. Ganyan. <laughs> Relax lang talaga siya. And then we got to the car. We said our goodbye. Si Eliam, nagising na siya. Hinayaan na lang namin kasi andiyan na naman yung grandparents niya. And we were in the car already. When we got to the car, I was just breathing heavily. Tinatry ko mag-vlog in between pero wala na akong nakuwang vlog clip kung hindi yung isang clip na yun na sinabi kong I think baby's coming. I think this is it. Tapos, just to paint you a picture, nakahawak ako sa handle ng front seat, tapos nakaangat na yung hips ko dahil masakit na talaga siya. Tapos, nagbe-breathe ako ng ganyan. As in, talaga, I was out of it. I was in labor land. I was telling Wancho na parang nagugutom ako in between my contraction. And I kid you not, while we were on SLEC and I was looking like I was about to give birth, sabi sa kanang asawa ko, gusto mong mag-drive through? <laughs> Mabar remember that when you said that? Tinanong niya ako kung gusto ko mag-drive through and I was like, this was my face. <laughs> Hindi ko na kaya. Dahil hindi na kaya, dumiretso na kami sa hospital. So we left the house at 5 a.m., around 5 a.m., and we got to the hospital at 5.26. And I remember because tinignan ko yung messages namin. So ito na nga. <laughs> so ang dami nangyari. ba? Diba? Chaos. That's why. I've been telling you guys. Because the chaos is swirling all around us. And when we got there, I whipped out my phone. I was like, baka naman kaya ko pang mag-record. Pero, hindi na talaga. Palapit kasi ng palapit yung contractions mo pag malapit ka ng mga anak. Nung nasa car kami, biglang naging every five. And I was like, bakit ang bilis nung transition? They put me on the wheelchair. I got into the birthing suite. And dahil nga, I had planned for an unmedicated birth. When I got in, chinek nila ako, 6cm na ako. So, dapat 10cm mga nganak ka na, di ba? And then, wala pa yung doctor ko, wala pa yung dula ko. No one was there. It was just me. Kahit si Wancho, wala pa dun dahil drain up off niya lang ako at pinart niya yung car niya. So, so the resident doctors checked me and they're like, okay, 6cm ka na every, what, 4-5 minutes yung contractions mo. Tapos tinawagan na rin nila yung pedia ko and everything. I kid you not, in the span of 2 hours, I gave birth. So by the time that we got to the hospital, 5.26 kami nakarating sa hospital, I gave birth at 6.57am. And that's actually called the precipitous labor because it was labor that happened and then I gave birth birth in less than 3 hours. Nung last time that I gave birth, I got my epidural at 5 cm dahil induced ako nun. Ito, when I got to the hospital, 6 cm na ako and Wancho was just there to help ease the pain dahil nga wala akong anesthesia so siya yung nagmamassage. I was like on the birthing ball. I was doing like the meditation and everything and then things just progressed so rapidly. I had no idea what was happening. Like 15 minutes pa lang ako nasa hospital. Biglang every 2 minutes na yung contractions ko and then biglang every 1 minute na yung contractions ko and my OB had just arrived. As in, kakababa niya lang ng bag niya, kakaupo niya lang dun sa sofa dahil nasa birthing suite kami and nagkakantuhan pa kami. Tapos parang sabi ko, Doc, bakit sobrang sakit? At saka bakit walang breaks in between? Ayun na. Bigla nang <laughs> nag-intensify siya. To the point, that my doula was not yet there kasi hindi normal yung nangyari sa akin na ganun kabilis yung phase nung labor. And I started asking already for an epidural kasi sobrang sakit na niya. Tapos bakit ang bilis at ang sakit at ang intense niya nakaagad? Parang ilang minutes pa lang ako nasa hospital. So anyway, I was telling Wancho, can you text doula Irina already that I want to get an epidural? And lo and behold, right when I was there on the bed already, tinatawag pa lang nila yung anesthesiologist. Nung pagdating ng anesthesiologist at pagdating ni doula Irina, manganganak na ako. As in, I already had the urge to push. And I don't know how to explain it to you, but it's just, in-explain sa akin pala eventually ni doula Irina na I was already in transition phase, which is the last part of labor when I started asking for an epidural. That's the 8 to 10 centimeters na nag-open up na talaga and parang palabas na si baby. 
So, kaya pala ganun ka-intense yung pain. And gusto ko na mag-quit kasi last part na talaga siya. The anesthesiologist came. Literally, ang sabi lang ng anesthesiologist, ay, ayan na pala. <laughs> so, wala na kami nagawa. Like, I was already on my back. The doctors were already fixing me to give birth. Dumating yung dula ko. And she said, give me a chance. Let me help you go through it. And that she did. I appreciate her so much. And if you ever plan on giving birth, whether it's unmedicated, well, yes, dapat unmedicated pala. Gentle birth, ganyan. If you want to do a water birth, get a doula because she really held my hand through it all. You know, kino coach na lako kung when na magpupush, but I wasn't even listening to their coaching because my body was just pushing. As in, wala kang magagawa. Para siyang natural instinct, nag automatic mode yung katawan mo na. You just went, ugh, nagagalang ka na lang, pupush ka na lang bigla. And I pushed five times. And then the baby was out. Two hours in the hospital, less than two hours in the hospital, I gave birth to Aggie with five pushes, five very intense pushes, the birthing story does not end there. After I gave birth to Aggie, sobrang shock na shock ako. As in yung feeling niya, ramdam ko lahat. Ramdam ko yung paglabas ng head niya. Ramdam ko yung paglabas ng body niya. As in, I felt everything. And then, when they put her on my chest, it was just pure bliss and shock at the same time. Like, what just happened? Ganung level. So throughout the entire process, my doula was telling me, you can do this. You're already doing it. You're already doing it. And my doctor was the same. A lot of people asked me, like, would you do it again unmedicated? Yes and yes. But this was really scary in the sense na ang daming things that could have gone wrong. First and foremost, precipitous labor is not normal. Second, when Aggie came out, she had a true knot, which only happens, I think, in less than 1% of pregnancies. And what that means is, and we'll show you a photo, nag not yung umbilical cord niya. It makes me really emotional just thinking about it now. It could have been fatal. That's how babies get oxygen and nutrients through the umbilical cord from the placenta inside, right? So, kung matagal ako naglabor or whatever, you know, things didn't go as God had planned it, it could have been really, really bad. In all of it, I feel like it was all a blessing from God. And yung precipitous labor na yon, kung gano siya kabilis, kung gano katagal, 40 weeks si Aggie, that gave her a lot of good chances na she was gonna come out healthy because kung nag true not yon tapos hindi pa siya full term baka a lot of bad things could have happened all of the doctors were shocked because there was no way to see that in the ultrasound that part only sunk in a few days after I gave birth na because I didn't want to think about it. The birthing story doesn't end there because after I had given birth to Aggie, I was bleeding so much. 